to say something. I'm going to say it is 4.01, and it is the appointed hour, so I'd like to welcome everybody to the February 21st, 2017 meeting of the Northampton Transportation and Parking Commission. My name is Ryan O'Donnell. I'm the chair of the commission, and I know the presence of a quorum today, so I'll call the meeting to order. Um, I'll note the audio and video recording of these proceedings, and if um, we can, let's start with introductions uh, for the benefit of the public, starting with our vice chair. Gina louis Shara, I'm the vice chair. Dave Pomerantz, director of Central Services. Gary Hartwell, citizen. Krista Burnett, citizen. John Lascalia, director of the Department of Public Works. Rich Cooper, citizen. Nancy Forrestal, assistant city collector. Maggie Chan, DPW. Terry, DPW. Okay. And let's begin, as we always do, the period of public comments and opportunities for members of the public to speak on any issue you wish. Uh, if you want to speak on an issue that's on the agenda farther down, feel free to wait for that time. We'll be happy to recognize you. Um, or you may speak twice. Um, the only thing we ask is you keep to about three minutes. And because items during public comment were not posted on the agenda, we can't engage in a back and forth discussion about them. So it's your time to share your thoughts with us. Um, is there anyone from the public who would like to, to participate in public comment right now? Okay. Um, like I say, if, we, uh, if your agenda item of interest appears later, we're happy to recognize you at that time. So seeing no public comment, we'll move to a, approval of the minutes. We have two sets of minutes, October 18th, 2016 and November 15th, 2016. Is there a motion to approve these minutes together? Move to approve the group. Or second. Are there any discussions or changes to the amendments? I will point out just a couple of small things in the November minutes um, in terms of the, who is present and absent. Ann Brooks should be Devin Bruce um, since Devin took over Ms. Brooks' spot. And on um, page four uh, regarding the motion on the ordinance that had to do with truck escape routes. Um, I want to clarify that the motion to amend reads as follows. Um, to move to amend so the ordinance only removes section C of the code relative to warnings and penalties. And that's just for the purpose of clarity. So are there any other additions, changes? Uh, if not, all in favor of the minutes? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we'll move now to reports from departments and subcommittees. Are there reports to be offered today? Floor is yours. For traffic calming, Mamatuck Street at the end of the temporary speed homes. They were removed in November. Um, a memo has been drafted and is being reviewed by emergency services and the mayor. Once this review, will come back to the uh, Riverside Drive. Application since that application was from 2009, we decided that we should do counts again rather than base it off of the old data. So we'll be doing that in the spring before Hinkley Street starts. North Farms Road application traffic counts will be taken in the spring. I'm currently working on the reports that are in the queue for Hatfield Street, Main Street, Lee, Cardinal Way, and Federal Street. And I'm working on updating the manual as well. Thank you very much. Any questions? Oh, I still have one. Oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> For Day Avenue, um, with, in conjunction with the waterline replacement, uh, the street will be reclaimed. There will be new sidewalks and curbing, and construction will occur in the spring. Audubon Road, there will be water and drainage improvements from Reservoir Road, which has 200, and a smaller <laughs> section near Kennedy Road. That will be reclaimed. Um, bidding is this Thursday. Construction will start in the spring. The Pleasant Street improvements. There will be raised crosswalks, raised intersection at the rail truck crossing, separated bike lanes, and some localized sidewalk repairs. Bid opening is this Friday. Hinkley Street reconstruction project. That's full depth reconstruction uh, in conjunction with a replacement of water, sewer, and drain lines, and new sidewalk. Uh, bidding will be in the spring. North King Street Roundabout, there will be a design public hearing on March 6th in the hearing room. 
Uh, Damon Rose, also a Max PhD project. There will be a design published during the spring, so we don't have a date yet. And the sidewalk inventory, they finished data collection, and also planning and design will be working on the gap analysis. <laughs> now are there any questions for our traffic engineer? Uh, um, the roundabout form, did you say it was 6 or 6.30? 6.30, 6.30. Yeah, so we're going to have to do the roundabout. Do you have any um, estimate about when the, the reports about the streets for which you've already collected data might be, might be ready, just so I can update the residents? Anything else on DBW updates? Okay. Uh, no other announcements or any departments like to share anything? Um, if not, then we'll move to the matters before the commission. We have two. We have one relative to school zones and one traffic calming application. Um, I sense that we have, I'm just guessing, we, I, we have at least two people here from the People's Institute. So what I'll do is um, I'd like to move up 5B. Um, and this is a traffic calming application for Gothic Street from the People's Institute received on December 5th, 2017. And you have copies of it here with signatures and, and so forth. What I'd like to do is describe our process for traffic calming applications and then invite anyone who'd like to speak to this particular application to, um, to do so. We've tried to set up a fair process in the Transportation Parking Commission for handling requests uh, to, uh, to build traffic calming devices, including speed bumps, including line painting, and a number of things that can come from, um, from that process. It starts with an application sometimes with resident signatures making the request. When we receive that, we have a discussion on it in this commission, and then we take a vote. The vote is, would be whether to study uh, the street. We don't want to make decisions based uh, without data. So a vote today would be a vote to ask the DPW to go out and put, the, put out those little counters in the road and measure the speed and volume and types of vehicles in the place in question. After the data comes back, you heard some of the discussion about previous applications that we have already have in the queue. After it comes back, it will come to the Transportation and Parking Commission again and we'll vote again about whether to rank it and proceed uh, from there. And we're also having a discussion about changing our process and improving it uh, so that we have actual recommendations uh, potentially to actually vote on. But to be clear, the point, what we'll do, what we'd be doing today, we'd be voting on whether to study the issue. And that's the first step in the process. So having given that explanation, uh, I'd like to open up to anyone who'd like to speak to the traffic application from the People's Institute. Um, I invite you just to come on up and give your name and address for the record. Um, my name is Courtney Sozowski and I'm an administrator at the People's Institute. Um, you know, it's during drop-off times, it's pretty hectic. Um, during the school years from September to June, we have um, about 120 kids that are being dropped off every morning and picked up every night. So the road's pretty hectic. Um, we have parents that park on both sides. So it's a little cramming, um, but we do have an understanding with the parking um, meter people, so they know that we do park on both sides, along with the police department. Um, but people are opening their cars to get the kids out, and there's people flying by, because I think people use Gothic Street as like a shortcut to get from King Street to Main Street. Um, and it's also a pretty busy um, street because of the courthouse. So, um, and the buses that do pick the kids up, because we run an after school program as well. Um, I mean, we have people flying by the buses every day. So we just, you know, we're looking out for the kids' safety and anything to slow these people down. So. Got it. Okay. I think any any questions from the commission? Um, we, we can always come back to that, but 
thank you very much. I'll ask if there's anyone else who'd like to speak to this particular item. No? She speaks for you? Okay. Um, <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you. All right, is there any other comment from the public on the, this particular traffic calming application? All right. Council. <clears throat> well, it's just one thing that's sort of interesting about this application is that usually it comes from a neighborhood, not an institution. And so usually the signatures on the application are from people who live in that neighborhood. But these, I, these names, I assume, are from, from parents who those, are dropping Yes, parents. those are those names are from parents. Um, I mean, if you guys were to just come down at our busy time, our busy times usually drop off um, between 8 and 9.30. Um, it's, it's pretty hectic. Um, I mean, 130 kids are getting dropped off, and I mean, both sides are being parked on. Kids are, parents are trying to get kids out of the car. You know, doors are open, and there's still people flying down the street. So it's pretty much just for the safety of the kids. Just, you know, you never know what can happen. Um, so we're just looking out for the kids, because it is, people do fly down that street, unfortunately. Do you have any recommendations, or what? What do you think would be helpful? For, I mean, um, I, I live around the corner from there. I've experienced this. I know exactly right. what you're talking about. I'm just wondering how you think. Just you speed help. bumps on the street. I mean, there's. I I looked. There's no posting of any speed limit. Not that people obey speed, speed limits anyways. But um, I actually have a few pictures. I don't know if you guys want to see. Um, just of like how tight it. Do you, should I give it to you? Sure. Do you want us to keep these? Or? Yeah, you can keep them. Um, it just shows like people opening the doors, how tight it is when, when yeah. the bus is here. It, okay. it pretty much goes down to a one lane. So maybe um, start there and pass it. So I'm just saying maybe speed bumps will slow people down. Um, I don't think a crosswalk is going to help at all. Um, yeah, we're thinking more speed bumps. But you, as you said, there is parking. People end up parking on both sides of the street, and so little kids are going back and forth across right. the street. Um, and I mean, I guess there's no other there's no other way to get the volume of children into your building at the times you need to do Fortunately, it. Fortunately, no. <laughs> Just a clarification question. Yep. So on your application, it says uh, hours of concern, eight to nine thirty in the morning. So that's an hour and a half. Yeah. Um, but two to five thirty in the afternoon. Is that a programmatic reason why it's so much longer in the afternoon? So we bus kids from our local elementary schools and high school in. Um, so the bus, I mean, we have buses coming in. I mean, people are flying by the buses all the time, um, and that's usually when parents start picking up, as as soon as kids get off the bus. And we're open until five thirty. So. Okay. Thank you. Do you have any kind of um, like a school crossing guard or anything? We do not. No. Is that something that um, has been discussed? Um, it is not. We, I mean, pay-wise, I don't think we would be able to maybe afford that. Um, I mean, we I, we could look into that definitely. Um, it's yeah, definitely, it's something to look into. Just a thought. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Any other comments? But just a, another clarifying question. You say speeding cars passing school buses. Are, are people disobeying the stop signs they on are. the school buses? Yes, but people do also fly down the street. I mean, whether it's school buses or the cars parked on either side. So the so the buses are stopped with lights flashing mm -hmm. and people are ignoring that. Yes. Yeah. That's a enforcement. Issue. Yes, definitely. So just to clarify, there's no there's no mid block crosswalk. There are any crosswalk that goes from like the courthouse to the parking garage. There's a there's a there's a um, yeah there's a crosswalk that goes from the parking garage to the courthouse. That's the only crosswalk. And then up further on Gothic Street, yes. Yeah, the Trumbull, and then it. Yeah. Has, has this been ongoing, or is this something a new? It's or? kind of been ongoing, um, but actually, one of our members of our board kind of brought it to our attention that we can go about it this way of maybe slowing traffic down. 
I mean, we've always worried about the safety of the children just because of how much traffic there is, especially at our busy times. Um, but, what, like I said, one of the board members brought to our attention. And has this been brought to the attention of the police at all? Of yes. Enforcement? Of yep, enforcement? about people flying by the buses, yes. We've called several times. So, yeah. Any other questions? Um, is there any reason why we wouldn't study the street that takes some counts, other than, of course, you have many other projects in the works as well? Is there any compelling reason not to do that? No, and I think that we should do it while school is in session. Obviously. We also um, hold a summer camp, so we're pretty much open all year round. Um, and summer camp, we actually have more kids. So um, the only difference is, is we don't have the buses. What, what would be your preferred time for us to investigate this issue? Um, mornings are pretty hectic, probably around 8, between 8 and 8.30 in the morning. In terms of time of year, though? Oh, um, spring would be, any time the spring would be great. Yeah. So like April? Yep. May? Sure. So we, we're unable to put traffic counters down when the weather is right, um, right. bad. You know, Which is understandable. As it, as yes. it, as it yeah. currently is, but we have a lot of projects in queue. Um, that, we have a lot of applications in queue okay. um, that will require traffic counters. So there's some coordination on the DPW's part to be certain that we're getting the counters down at a time when it's most beneficial to understand the full okay. extent of this issue. Um, when does your school let out for the year? Um, not till June 20th, I think. 23rd. And then summer camp. And then summer begins. camp starts at 26. But you don't have the buses. Correct. That you have during the school year. Right. Okay. Yeah. And you also have an April vacation? Yes. Third week? Third week. Is it third week? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So any other time <laughs> would be great. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. And as kind of upsetting as it is to talk about, I mean, we should look at accident data for the road. So maybe uh, through the DPW, we could request that information from the, the police department uh, in accident history. So that will inform our decision as well. All right. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, unless there's any more discussion, um, could someone could certainly make a motion to ask the DPW to proceed with um, the traffic count um, whenever they think would be most efficacious. I just have a couple of questions. Um, Ryan, just on the yeah. agenda, um, I just want to correct. You said receipt on December 5th, 2017, so that oh. hasn't happened yet. Thank you. Thank um, you for noting that. And the, the, um, the right. traffic coming request form, uh, I'm surprised to see the pace car program on there. Is that still active? That question has come up before, and I don't think... I think and I'm also surprised to see that all 71 people are members of the pace car, even though some are living in South Deerfield and things. So I have a feeling they don't no, understand just, <laughs> what that is. Okay. Well, at least there's no members of NASCAR. Uh, that's a good question. And I, I do take the point that this is request from you know including many people from other communities as well which is which is unusual um, well anyway is there any other discussion on would someone like to make a motion to request the DPW to study move to request okay. the study okay is there a second on that second okay uh, any further discussion on the request all those in favor uh, aye. Aye. any opposed any abstentions okay thank you so we'll be in touch we get some data back okay. uh, about the next step of the process. Okay. Thank, Thank you for you. your time. We really Thank you. It. Okay. Um, now we're going to go to item 5A. This is an ordinance 17.233 um, relative to school zones. Um, I'll introduce it if I, if I may. Um, the authority to establish School zones is, is given to cities and towns by state law, um, tempered by state regulations. 
Um, and these are important to acknowledge up front. Um, you have kind of a cheat sheet. I put together a little, a little grid um, enumerating some of the rules of what a school zone is. A uh, school zone, of course, is 20 miles an hour. Uh, that speed limit is only effective at certain times of day, usually when students are leaving and coming to school. Um, st school zones have to comply with certain regulations that um, are in the mass uh, manual and uniform traffic control devices. Um, and those are principally, the school has to be um, grades one through eight. The school must be located on a public street. And students have to cross the street to get to school. So I say that up front because as I put this out there, I've already gotten comments from people like, hey, why isn't this institution covered in this ordinance? Why isn't this one? People's Institute, for example. Um, and the reason is because it has to be a certain grade um, and there has to be certain physical requirements that are met. So as strange as it may be, the state law uh, is such that Northampton High School cannot have a school zone. And so we can debate the wisdom of the, the state legislature which passed this. Um, but under the law that applies, my intention would be just to establish all the school zones that we can under the authority that we, we have to do that. So, um, <clears throat> because all this is spelled out in state law and state regulation, there are a number of deletions in this ordinance of the existing code. You can see all this stuff that gets deleted. And that's because our ordinance, our code of ordinances previously sought to essentially duplicate what was already in state law. And it did so sort of imperfectly in a way that was confusing. Um, so I've, I've removed a lot of it because the law exists elsewhere. And I've tried to simplify the ordinance. So the ordinance is basically in the table that you see uh, enumerating the school zones. And so here are the changes. For Bridge Street School, that school zone is currently only on Parsons Street and Union Street. This ordinance would extend the school zone um, to Bridge Street itself along Lamprey Park. Uh, it would rename in this table what was uh, previously the College Church School to what it is now, which is the Cushions Program campus. Uh, it would add a school zone for the Montessori School on Industrial Drive and Bates Street. It would add a school zone for the Smith College Campus School on both State Street and Prospect Street. Um, and I would like the Commission to entertain uh, an amendment, which is on a separate page, which would add a school zone for the Lander Grinspoon Academy, which is on Prospect Street. Um, so I don't think, unless people wish me to, I'm not going to read this verbatim because it's a bunch of measurements, but I think I've summarized it correctly. Um, and, uh, and so that, that, would, that would be my intention with this. And, and I have kind of a number of technical things I'd like to do shortly, but having described it, is there any uh, well, first I'll call for a public comment on the ordinance if there's anyone who'd like to speak uh, speak to the school zone ordinance as it is. Um, and if not now, feel free to raise your hand uh, farther down the meeting. But is there any comment from the from the commission about establishing schools? So, as far as designating school zones, um, once you do it, does it? allow you to use the designation as a springboard for making additional improvements, signage, lighting, crosswalk, speed bumps, go for funding uh, with this designation. The reason I'm asking is that at Bridge Street School, a number of us are working with the staff and administrators there on the age-old bus loop mm -hmm. traffic congestion problem. Right. Uh, too, too narrow of streets in the neighborhood, you can't get fire apparatus through during drop-off or closing time, pickup time. Um, so we've begun looking at this whole issue again, and we talked about designation as a school zone. So I'm curious, if you designate an area, does it, how does it assist you, and does it assist you in moving forward with doing additional work and, and either designating areas there's no parking, getting signage up, uh, making it easy for uh, go for grants for funding, things like that. Mm -hmm. I think it's an excellent question. I'll share what I know, and the DPW can supplement it. What I think is it, it, it doesn't help you. 
I think that it's, it's purely a local option to lower speed in certain places, certain times. Uh, and it doesn't qualify you for any special funding that I'm aware of. This exact same question came up in the Legislative Matters Committee, uh, which took us up a little bit a couple weeks ago. Because you would think, yeah, if you were in a school zone, we would have some funding to implement signage and that sort of thing. But it's my understanding that there's no, there's no funding trigger. Maybe in the future, maybe it demonstrates we're, we're you, know, you know, we kind of put up our own money for something. Maybe it demonstrates, you know, if we apply for other grants in the future, maybe it makes the case. But yeah, nothing, nothing direct. So is the impetus for this just to clean up the ordinances and to, to add more schools that are really schools? Is it your idea? Yeah, to clean up the ordinance, I think the Bridge Street. Um, school zone. I think it's a strange oversight that Bridge Street itself is not included. I think it should be. I, I think one thing it, it would allow us to do in that case would be to add a blinking light if we eventually found our own funding to do that at some point. All the other elementary schools in the city have blinking lights. Bridge Street. Um, and the other intention, I mean, it's, it's for the schools themselves, but I think they're also lie at key points in the city that have an overall beneficial traffic calming effect in Northampton. I mean, the Montessori School, yeah, they're expanding the other side of the street, but there are, are features there that are important, you know, the crossing of the bike trail. Um, it's a cut through, we hear in this commission all the time about, uh, about truck traffic and, and other traffic to Damon Road. Um, the Smith College Campus School on State Street, that's on State Street, you're coming right into downtown. Um, and on Prospect Street, um, I think that's another heavily used road. An additional benefit for, for Prospect Street is actually that you have a crossing guard there for kids who are going to Jackson Street in the morning. So even though the school zones for the Lander Grinspoon Academy, it would actually serve students who are going to one of our public schools. So I guess it's for a variety of reasons that I think are beneficial. So would, people still be fall under this or? I don't believe they would, and I, I'd be happy to be mistaken on that, but I think because, I mean, isn't the People's Institute primarily a, a daycare? Yeah, they don't go to first grade. So it has to be first grade, first through eighth grade. Yeah. And I don't believe that they would fall under that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah, it's strange that there's a floor, you know, it's like, so it's a kindergarten, it doesn't count. Your high school it doesn't count, so I don't know. It's it's the only weird decision the state has ever made. No, that's not true. Well, I, I thought you were striking that part of what grades it must contain, but that's still covered under state, state. law. Yeah, that's why I'm striking that from our code of ordinances. But as this as this chart points out, this shows this site's where you can find each of the rules, and the grade requirement is actually found in the uh, Massachusetts Amendments to the Manual on Uniform Traffic Control Devices, which the law requires regulations to be you know, put forth in there. And so if our ordinance did something different, it wouldn't matter because the state would arrive. Yeah, that's why, that, that's a good point. I mean, that, even though these things are being removed from our ordinance, they're, they're s secure because they're elsewhere in state. Are there any other thoughts or counsel? I'll just say, I, I mean, I think it's, it was a really well done and um, smart idea and, and a good way to implement some traffic calming in these areas. So thank you for all that work. Thank you. Thank you very much. One of them's in Ward 4. Um, That's true. So if I may, I mean, you know, we, we make recommendations of this body. We don't actually pass ordinances, but um, I would like, well, first of all, is there a motion for a positive recommendation for the ordinance itself? So moved. Second. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I would just move that we adopt these two amendments on this other sheet. And the first would be to add the Lander Grinspoon Academy, and I will read it because it's an amendment. Uh, Lander Grinspoon Academy on Prospect Street, extending from the eastern edge of their place to a point 300 feet east of the center line of Franklin Street. So basically right around, you know, the land of Grinsbury Academy and the Y up to the four-way stop. And 
And also, according to the, uh, this is a recommendation from the solicitor, uh, who considers it a separation of powers issue to have the provision which currently reads, the city council shall establish no school zone in the absence of a favorable recommendation from the Transportation and Parking Commission. Um, I put that in there because I thought it would be better to, so the city council just didn't put school zones around like random taco trucks and you know whatever guitar stores. So there actually had to be a real good reason to have a school zone, but the solicitor thinks that is a problem. So I recommend um, removing <coughs> section A and we change B to A. So it would, it would, the ordinance would start right off 312-18 school zones. Actually, there would be no, um, sorry, no section A. It would just say the following school zones are hereby established for Master General Law Chapter 9, section 17, and then it would enumerate them. So, let's, any, any objection to including those amendments? Okay, hearing no objection, those are incorporated. Any further discussion on the motion for positive recommendation? Okay, if not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, thank you very much. Um, let's see, any new business today? Okay, if not, is there a motion to adjourn? Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Thank you.